Welcome back everybody. We have another Tractor Talk episode for you today. We've rounded up the greatest news, the mods, the funny stuff. Make sure you stick around. I am really excited about today's show. Let's get it started with some Tractor Crazy. All right, so this was sent over from TikTok. Mr. King is the account and he, I don't know if this is him in the video, but he's got some crazy tractor stuff going on in there. I mean, these guys, they look like they have a death wish pretty much is what I can tell. They have some souped up crazy tractors doing a lot of, that looks like they're having a great time. I'll be honest, looks like they're having a great time, but this looks pretty dangerous. Maybe this is their version of Bronk and Bucks over there. I don't know. Either way, you won't find me doing that. I mean, if you scroll through his account, he's got some pretty other crazy stuff on there as well. Nothing I've ever seen before. It's good for a laugh. Speaking of funny, Think Build Test down in Texas had a big old snowstorm blow through a couple of weeks ago, and he posted something about that on Facebook. Check it out. Hun, you don't need that shovel. I'll get the tractor. Yep, she pays for herself every day. <laughs> All right, one more for you today. This is from last spring, actually. There was a dispute, actually, in my home state of Michigan here, there was a dispute over in Washtenaw County over a property line. All right, now this was out in the country. One of these gentlemen happened to own a farm okay and so what he did to settle that dispute is take all sorts of his cow manure and just build a poop fence right between the two neighboring properties there no word if he used a tractor or a skid steer to mark his land but if he did use a skid steer well he could have said he skid marked it when asked about his poop wall the neighbor who built it said it's not a poop wall it's a compost fence that's marketing for you probably sold like it has some cultural or agricultural benefit well not really see the poop wall is really all part of a family feud they normally spread it on the field but uh, decided to make a fence out of it and last year when there was a dispute over a property line well the poop hit the farm you've been around poop all your life on this farm uh -huh. i mean this shouldn't be that big a deal for you no but when you got uh, renters, you know, they have to live with this every day. I come here to mow the lawn. And they are consistently ruining my morning as I walk out. Can't leave the window open because the whole upstairs will smell like it. How you doing? And there's the guy that put up the poop wall. Could you just talk about the, the poop wall here? Yeah, but the but Wayne doesn't like it though. I guess he wanted to go back to planting corn. All right, my absolute favorite part of the week, which is the tractor mods. We have some great ones for you today. Now, the first one is a video from MJA doing stuff. He did a fantastic, just an amazing job making this homemade three-point hitch log grapple. Does use some extra hydraulics. He did this all in this shop. Again, you're not going to see any, uh, any welding equipment around here. I just don't have that skill set, but let's let Mitch tell you all about it. I don't have a flat welding table, so this part of the garage floor is actually the flattest part of the garage. So I'm going to tack it all up here on the floor. Here I'm showing the tip of the torch and how it rides on the plywood. So I just take that diameter and split it in half. And you can see on the stencils, the red line is where the torch is actually going to ride. And then the black line is going to be what the piece is actually going to come out to after it's cut.
All right, very cool, Mitch. Thanks for posting that online. Next up, we have Kent Cripps. Sent over a handful of pictures, another very talented guy. Kent made several attachments here, two of them for his own tractor, and then a couple for his son's tractor toys as well. You can take a look at this tree saw he built, serrated edges on there, beautiful fabrication job. I'd love to see some video of that thing at work. A homemade bale spear or bale fork, I guess it is, and then a couple of those tractor toy attachments too. So whether it's big or small, Kent can do it all. All right, so this next one I actually found, it's for sale right now on Facebook if it hasn't sold by the time you see this. This is actually the mule deer. You've seen the John Deere, but you haven't seen the mule deer until now. This is a homemade fabrication. I suppose it could be pulled along behind, but it is also self-powered. It has an electric motor on it, an electric yard cart, haul your deer, your apples, your yard junk, homemade by a guy in Holland, Michigan. You gotta check this thing out. It does come in at a pretty steep price tag though of 2,900 bucks, either way, a very clever man designed this. All right, and last up for this week, we have Jim Tesmer who sent over some really cool pictures. He used his fabrication skills to add on some hydraulics and a swing down gate so that he could turn his traditional three point blower into sort of a pull type where you drop that back drag down, you start collecting snow, it pushes it into the chute, ejects it out. You can also see here a homemade cab, very nice to keep you out of the elements, all the extra hydraulics inside his tractor and a pretty heavy duty looking snow plow. All in all, some very cool modifications there. Absolutely love to see it. And that brings us to our tractor tool of the week, which this week is the bottomless bucket. Now this is not for sale just yet. It's in the prototype phase, all right? And it's kind of that behind the scenes work that takes so much effort before you can actually launch a product. And so Phil over there with bottomless bucket has a really cool concept going on. It's a very lightweight bucket to hold a large volume. So like leaves or trash or other light debris and be able to pick it up and then dump it without needing any extra hydraulics at all. So you can take a look at the design here. We'll let Phil tell you more about it but we're looking for some input on this. He wants to know, is the design good as it is? Should he be making some tweaks here and there? What would you guys like to see and what do you think about this product? Hey everybody, welcome to the Bottomless Bucket YouTube channel. Um, we're here introducing this new uh, bottomless bucket uh, for the spring of 2022. This is a solid aluminum uh, sided bucket uh, that is bolted together. Uh, it's designed to uh, mount onto your John Deere Quick Attach or your Kubota Quick Attach systems. The bucket itself is made of 3 16th inch sheet aluminum and weighs in at a total of about 130 pounds. It is 60 inches long. Uh, it is 24 inches wide at the bottom here and 20, uh, 30 inches rather at the top. So an average of 27 inches of width. Uh, for the particular bucket and 26 inches deep. So that gives you almost a full yard of capacity uh, to put material, light material into this bucket. Uh, we've got 600 pounds of bagged pellet, 40 pounds per bag. Now that's going to bring us to our tractor of the week, which is going to be a 1025R that Daniel Conrad has souped up. This isn't the first time we've seen Daniel on this channel. We saw him a while back when we were comparing snow pushers. He had some issues with a Frontier snow pusher, but one thing's for sure, he doesn't have any issues with this 1025R. He has decked this thing out. It is modded to the max. One of my favorite things that he did is take his tractor in, take the seat into a motorcycle shop and had them redo the seat. Okay, so it is now a leather seat with a seat heater and his Mauser cab and his 1025R. Man, I would pay some good money for that. One of the other really creative things he did is go out and purchase half of the single point quick disconnect for the hydraulics. A real pain to get to those hydraulics underneath the Mauser cab, so he essentially relocated them up into a very easy, accessible location. And that's not all. Daniel also modded up some mud flaps and made them work on his 1025R on the front wheels. 
absolutely love that. He added on an electric deflector as well and put a switch right on his dash to be able to control it. Just incredible. And then the last thing, pay attention to this as well. He says, did you know this was available? I had no idea. He found this, I'm not sure where, but it's an Australian part number available through John Deere. His local dealer ordered it in, but you know how we've talked about the cylinder lockouts, like on your front end loader, you see something like that on skid steers, other heavy machinery, but not really on tractors too much. Well, he got this through his Deere dealer. We're gonna go ahead and post up that part number if you wanna reach out to your local dealer, see if you can get it. This is a great safety feature that shouldn't be overlooked. And now speaking of safety, we are proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. A lot of tractors are really tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it. Adding a set of wheel spacers is gonna widen that footprint there on the rear axle, make it a lot more stable. Bora Wheel Spacers are made in America and they have a lifetime warranty. Check the link out down below. We are glad you guys are here. If you're enjoying this video, we'd love to have you tag along. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button down below to see more in the future. And I'm guessing if you're watching this show, you either own a tractor or maybe you will in the future, give us a shot. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. We talked about tractor fires a few weeks back and you know what? I think because I was looking up some of those videos, YouTube had recommended another. This week, we've got a John Deere 4052R burning up. This thing gets smoked completely out. If you ever wanted to see what the shell of a tractor looks like after it's burnt up, you gotta watch this. Well, I hope everything turned out all right for this gentleman here and that insurance was able to take care of it. I tried to search through follow-up videos and didn't really find much resolution on that, so hopefully things turned out well for him. You know, I've heard some crazy things happening with trees falling on tractors, tractors getting burned up in house fires and barn fires. This one just happened to catch fire on its own. So who knows, maybe now's the time for you to contact your own agent and make sure your tractor is covered. Now, speaking of insurance, we are proud to announce a new GWT partner, N never mind, never mind. <laughs> We're not partnering with any insurance companies right now. Sorry about that cut. Now it's time for your tractor tip of the week. Now, I have not had this happen to me personally. I've not heard of it happening to anybody else until now, but it only takes a few seconds to check, so I think it's probably worth doing. Now, Brian Sizemore writes that he did his own service on his Coyote tractor last summer, and then once we got to the cold weather now, he went to fire it up, turn it on, and then found all this hydraulic oil gushing out underneath his tractor, wound up taking three gallons to top it off, so he lost a lot of fluid. Fortunately, that's all that happened, but what Brian found out is that his hydraulic filter was completely loose, the O-ring was all messed up in there. The only thing he can think of is that when he did this in the summertime, he tightened everything down just like he thought he should, and that transition to the cold weather perhaps shrunk things up, the, the O-ring, the seal on there, and it kind of came loose just enough. Maybe vibration in the machine, who knows what it was, but it was enough to have fluid leaking all over the place, causing a big mess. So that could be one of those things that only takes a couple seconds just to check your filter, make sure it's nice and snug on there, could save a big headache. All right, time for your tractor news, and the first one up is actually called Tractor Wars. <laughs> and it's a book about the early 1900s when there were, believe it or not, 160 companies out there trying to make a name for themselves in the agricultural world, building a tractor. And at one point it says Henry Ford was even trying to buy John Deere. So if you are into this kind of thing, maybe you're looking for a good present for a birthday or Father's Day, check it out. We'll put a link down below where you can buy this and find this. It could be a good read. Okay, a new article posted by businesswire.com says that Tractor dealers are significantly lagging behind power sports, the automotive industry, and getting back to their customers. So if you are out there shopping for a tractor, and let's say you leave a message or you submit a website lead, you expect somebody to promptly call you back and get you the information you want. What this article is saying is that tractor dealers, for reasons unknown, are lagging way behind. Even the best company out there, New Holland, ranked higher than any other tractor manufacturer, only promptly responds to 35% of their customers, which is one out of three. In the auto world, it's over 50%. Even in the power sports world, it's 40% on average. So you have New Holland at the absolute top, only getting back to one out of three of their customers. Now, Bobcat ranks the lowest in this survey at only getting back to 22%. All these response rates are pathetic. Now that's just unacceptable to me. You know, if I don't get back to somebody, it's because of a complete accident of an oversight or maybe something went to spam or a voicemail didn't come through or some unusual reason. I make a concerted effort to make sure we get back to everybody possible, which can be hard at times, but these kinds of response rates are just pathetic. All right, now this last one is good to see. It says a Carmel man uses his 70 year old tractor to clear their neighbor's snow. Now, from what I can tell, this tractor has been in the family for all 70 years, so they're definitely getting their money's worth out of that one too. But this gentleman here just loves what he does. Now, this gentleman's name is Ernie Forney, living in Carmel, Indiana. It says, I just wait for it to snow and come out here and plow people's driveways just for the heck of it. He says, it's just 
just fun, it's just playtime. A lot of us can relate. We just said something similar in a recent video. If you have the equipment, it's fun to help out your neighbors. It helps them out, it feels good for you too. Ernie goes on to say that the church I go to, we have a good neighbor weekend. Every weekend we go out and serve the community. It's just part of my task of serving the community, but it's fun. It's not work, trust me, it's fun. Well, that puts a smile on my face. I think we could all take a page out of Ernie's book. All right, now it's time for your survey of the week. And a little while back, I asked, have you ever had a flat tire on your tractor? And your options to answer were never. Yes on the front tire, yes on the rear tire, and I don't answer poll questions. Now surprisingly, we had 7% of folks say, I don't answer poll questions. Hmm. We're going to have to talk more about that. So roughly two-thirds of folks have experienced a flat tire. You know, it's a real pain in the neck if you have a flat tire in the field. There's a few things you can do about it. We showed recently where you can use some spray. Spray that on there, light a match, run for cover, and watch that thing blow up. The one thing if you do that method is you need to make sure you have an air compressor on hand so that you can fill the tire back up, get the air pressure in there. Otherwise, that will release and settle back down. Home Down Acres did a really good video on using a tire plug kit. So keep one of those on hand as well. An easy thing to have there. Now, that may not solve every issue, but I've had hundreds and hundreds of used tractors in here and many of them have had plugs in the tires so believe it or not if you're using a tractor long enough more than likely that's going to come in handy all right now it's time for our swag giveaway now the way that you can win is just leave a comment in this video if you get the most thumbs up on it whoever gets the most is going to win the swag for the following week we are getting some more stuff in soon you're looking at a couple prototypes here but pens shirts hats coffee mugs keychains, whatever we can find, we're going to round that up and mail it out to you. So congratulations to this week's winner. That is going to wrap it up for us this week. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to stop by. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button to follow along. And if you want something for your tractor, give us a shot. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. This week, we're going to close it out with a time-lapse video. This customer, Jason Baker, had purchased a Kubota B2650 and the snow pusher from me. Have a really good look. Enjoy this video watching the time lapse as he clears his driveway. So until next time, stay safe and we'll see you soon.